Okay, everybody, listen up. Uh, we got with us here this morning, Pastor Stephen Russ uh, is going to lead us in a prayer. Stephen, come on up here. He is the pastor of Faithway Baptist Church. Amen. He's not only a, a patriot, but he's also um, a Christian soldier of Christ. And so we're happy that he's here with us today. We appreciate that, Stephen, for being out here with us. And uh, we're going to have this prayer because we always need God to help us. And I think Trump knows how much he needs God to help him now, don't he? Thank you. Let's pray together, all right? Lord God, we thank you for your blessings on our nation. And Lord, we do love our country. We thank you for all that you've given us, our freedoms, our liberties. And Lord, while we know that they're at stake every single day, we do want to thank you. The Bible says we should do things first of all with thanksgiving. And so we begin with that today. Then Lord, we thank you for your protection on President Trump last week. And Lord, what a, what a divine moment of intervention that you displayed for the whole world to see. Lord, I pray that you'd use that moment to draw people to an understanding that you are in control, that you are a good God, and that you have a plan. And Lord, we pray that today that you would help us to be salt and light. Your word tells us that we ought to be influential in the world. And Lord, the worst thing that we could do as believers is to step aside from the process. I pray for more Christians to get involved. Lord, I pray for more of our citizens to become Christians. And Lord, I pray that you would please bring us closer to you. Your word says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And so, Lord, we do pray for a national revival. And then, Lord, we pray for this upcoming election. The Bible says that, first of all, prayers should be made and supplications for all men, for kings, and for all who are in authority. We pray for our current leaders. And, Lord, we pray that you draw them to an understanding of your son, Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would give us a resounding victory for good and for right in the fall. And Lord, we pray for men like Jim Toms and others who are just like him, who are fighting the good fight and who love you and their families and all the people who are here today. Bless this time, Lord. I pray it result in more people getting engaged and involved in the process that you've been so good and gracious to give us in this great nation. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Russ. We thank you, Stephen, so much. All right, we're going to do a Pledge of Allegiance here. we got a flag over here. Okay, hats off, guys. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And uh, I'm going to hand the microphone now over to Mark. Mark is the one spearheaded this whole event, and I want to thank him for all the work he's done, all the, all the, uh, what he's put in with the signs. Uh, we got the location. I want to thank Mike for the trailer here, our stage. I want to thank all of you for showing up today and being here with us. We're grateful for that. We're going to do more of these. We got a ways to go before election time. Amen. And uh, anyway, I'm going to hand over here to Mark. Thank you, everybody. Um, just something real quick, a little history here. Um, 56 people signed the Declaration of Independence. Nine of those died of wounds during the Revolutionary War. Five were captured or imprisoned. Wives and children were killed, jailed, or left penniless. Twelve signers' houses were burned to the ground, and 17 lost everything they owned. No signer defected. Not one. Their honor, like their nation, remained intact. This is how much the idea of freedom meant to our founders, and all that they sacrificed for it. Throughout the years, Americans have become complacent with protecting our freedom, and now look at where we are, a country that looks like a shell of what we once were. And I believe on the cusp of losing our nation and our freedoms forever. That is why this election and elections beyond 2024 are so important. We must make sure that we vote in every election, whether it's national or local. They are all just as important. We must make sure to elect conservative candidates that will put America first, and abide by the will of the people to protect our freedoms as laid out in the Constitution. Today begins a new day where every person here, every person here has a responsibility to get active, get involved, make sure that our children and grandchildren have the same freedoms and opportunities that were given to us. We only accomplish this by educating people, getting people involved, registering people to vote, and taking back the role that we the people have. May God bless you all protect you and may God bless this great nation once again. And I'd like to introduce our very own Indiana State Senator Jim Toms.
Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate you reflecting back on where we started at and how, we're, how we got here. I don't know, but we are we're here. Uh, this is a start, folks. Uh, Mark's made some uh, posters for me uh, to point out, just to highlight some of the things that we've been enduring. I know most of you have. We heard it. If you watch the uh, convention, you've seen they covered a lot of this as well. Um, I, I just, uh, before I get started in this, you know, I, it bothers me uh, to see what's happened to our country. Did you guys see the World War II soldier that spoke at the convention? I liked what he had to say. That man had seen what America once was, and that was a spectacular group of people back then. I don't know what's happened. I don't know how it got bred out, but we got to reignite it. And I'm looking at people right here are the ones with the fire in their eyes and in their heart willing to do that. That's why you're here today. That's what it's going to take. The other side has been barking and yelling and making noise. And our side, for the most part, has been quiet. And they back up and they apologize. There is no apology should come from our side. We're, we're, we're asking God for help. And God gives us that help. He gives us that assistance. He gives us direction. We don't apologize for that. We're trying to take the call, His lead, what He's wanting us to do. We don't apologize. If anybody needs to apologize, it should be them, right? right. They're the ones that wrecked our country. They're after our kids. They're trying to destroy our Christian faith. Everything that's wholesome has been turned upside down. So, and listening to that, that World War II soldier really inspired me. I, I got to tell you, you know, I served three years in the Army, too. And uh, a year in Vietnam. You know, for those that's never been in the service, when you go in initially, they... They give you physicals. They do. They check you from head to toe. Everything about you, and and they 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 type your blood as well. Okay. Now you know you got O positive and so forth like that. Well, they type me as a uh, A negative, but that was wrong. My blood type is red, white, and blue. How about yours? Huh? Is that your blood type? When somebody asks what's your blood type, what do you tell them? That's what it is. That's right. And this country, look at this country. Look at what we have for our symbol. An eagle. Not a turtle dove. We got an eagle. That eagle, that bird, nobody bothers the eagle. Nobody bothers the eagle. The eagle don't cause anybody any trouble. But if you want some trouble, the eagle can give you trouble. Nobody bothers the eagle. We've got things in the history of this country that we need to... We need to be proud of, and we need to showcase it. So we wear these shirts. We go places. Today, this morning, we ate breakfast right here. People out there said, like your shirts. Like your shirts. Yeah. And if somebody says they don't like your shirt, well, they can move on. Or if they want to make a confrontation about it, that's okay, too. Either way. But we are going to be proud of what we are, who we are, and what we're doing. Okay. <clears throat> Looking here at some of these, some of these posters... And I know, that, like I said, I know they covered it multiple times during the convention. And you guys are witnessing it and experiencing it yourself. You know, for the young people right now, uh, on mortgage rates, on homes, nobody, a young person can't get a home today. They can't get a home today. My Lord, it's, it's, you're lucky if you can get a Happy Meal and still have a few dollars left in your wallet, right? And, and you see how it, it's the highest level in 20 years. And it's, it's going through the roof, these mortgage rates. Uh, people that want to maybe get a home, they're, they're satisfied with just trying to get an apartment if they can afford that. That's awful. When we were teenagers and, and young adults, we had uh, our life staked out, what we wanted to do, most of us anyway. I didn't exactly have it at that point, but I finally grew into it. But uh, you had dreams, and maybe someday owning a house was a dream. For them, that's not part of a dream anymore. Uh, home prices, that's what we're talking about here. The prices of homes is outrageous. Uh, this, these, uh, this here um, covers how much over the year uh, the median sale. This is the median sale price of a home, four hundred fifty-nine thousand dollars. That's a fact. I was stunned. I, I haven't been in a home market in a long time. Where we live now, been there for a while. But my brother sold his house and bought another one. I couldn't believe the dollar figures on these homes. Unbelievable. Geez. Um, this is a housing gap. We're talking about the, the difference between uh, uh, what it was in 1984 and now 2020. 
It's incredible. The, the, these numbers are outrageous. It's hard to even imagine, but it's the real thing. And I feel sorry for the people that uh, the young ones trying to uh, make a life for themselves. Consumer price index, well, you know how that is, right? And your gas prices, food prices. I, I took Margie, I took Margie and um, our daughter out to one of the ice cream shops here in, in Evansville a few weeks ago. I bought a malt, I bought my daughter a malt, Margie got an ice cream cone. $27! I thought, what am I making a payment on somebody's car who works here? What is that? $27 for three ice creams! I could have bought a cow for $27 a few years ago. A dairy cow, that is. Uh, gas prices, we've seen that too. Uh, and, and on this gas price, folks, it bothers me what's happening. I want to talk about that in particular because this, uh, this administration, by the way, this, this is my quote. I've said this to, uh, when people ask me, I said it when we were in session this past year in committee, uh, we was talking, we had a bill that was going to prohibit China from buying farmland or any land or property in its state. We got it passed. And, uh, but there was amazing how many people were in that room speaking against the bill. And they were lobbyists for China companies. That's why they were lobbying against it. But I, I, I was outraged by how many there were that was trying to fight us on this bill. And I pointed out, I said, uh, this administration, and I'm saying this for the cameras, folks, because it's going to play tonight on the news. This is the largest collection of misfits I've ever seen assembled in my lifetime. And so, getting back to the gas prices, with Biden's green energy stuff and these electric cars, now it's come out recently. I, I did a, I sent a, uh, uh, an opinion piece to the media. Actually, it wasn't an opinion piece; it was a fact, fact piece about 42 percent or 46 percent of the people who have electric cars say they will not buy another one, they want to go back to gas cars. And uh, we, we got something going on right now in Indiana here where NDOT had three meetings uh, in three locations in the state, the farther south they came was uh, Vincennes, to ask people where they want NDOT to build these charging stations. Okay, I wrote, I contacted NDOT, I said, why are you doing this? This stat here where 46% of the electric car owners don't want another one, and their sales, Ford, announced it costs them a million dollars per unit per car electric car that they built they're taking it in the teeth their sales are slumping and and along with that these charging stations with MISO which is a which is the outfit that monitors all of our grid for 16 states plus a uh, Providence in uh, Canada MISO uh, is the ones that the coal companies check with every day because they they give you a readout of where the grid is, the load on our grid at any given moment. You can look on your phone right now. And they're near capacity right now. They're at the tipping point of going over at any day because it's that high. And so NDOT is thinking about putting charging stations up. It's not bad enough that we're lucky we're not having blackout and brownouts right now. But they, they one of the spokesmen for the coal company said they're asking the General Assembly not to have, not to close any more coal-fired plants right now because it's critical. We're making more mistakes led by a person who cannot get up the steps of an airplane, can't get into his limo, can't ride a bike without falling down, can't get on a stage without falling down. He's leading our country. And and Endon is wanting to build these charging stations. I'm saying, hold up. Why are you going to build something for, there might not even be a market by then. So, and if they, and in the closing of these coal fire plants, which in turn also, if they keep this push going on with this green energy and electric cars, gas stations ultimately will be closing, right? Yes. And refineries won't have gas stations to be purchased in the products they make. And if we close, we haven't built a new refinery in this country in like 22 years, I think, or something like that. And I've asked this question before in these town hall meetings, and I've asked people who's in elected and appointed positions on this. When we shut down, I asked, I asked this of NDOT a few years ago when he was in Evansville, giving us a readout on what they were doing for the next uh, few years on road construction, highway, bridges, railroad crossings, they was going to do all this work. And I asked him, I said, I got a question for you. Tell me all this road work you're going to do. When we shut down the last refinery in this, and we, this was at uh, Country Mark, by the way, this is where this meeting was held at, at the refinery. We were in the shadow of the refinery. 
I said, when we shut down the last refinery in this country, and that's where we're going, I see nothing stopping it. Where are you getting the products? Where are you going to get the asphalt? Where are you going to get the materials to build these roads you're talking about right now? His answer was, Senator, I'm glad you asked that question. That's a good question. We don't know. <laughs> you see what's happening? I mean, <clears throat> it's, it's with our energy. It's with uh, our economy, our economics, our food prices, things we buy. It's with our education. They're in our schools destroying the minds of little children. It took me three years to get that nasty books out of the schools. Three years with Republican supermajorities. My fight was with my own party to get that bill passed. Three years. I was up against the lobbyists that lobby for the, the libraries and, and the schools. Finally got it done. But why, why are these people intent on poisoning the minds of our innocent little children? You know, life, life is short. A childhood life only lasts for a little while. Then you're an adult. You can't go back. And, and life deals you some hard cards to play, right? So why not let them be a children children for a while. Let them be innocent child, children for a little while. Can't we do that? What a fight that was. So the, this administration has gone after our kids. <clears throat> They've wrecked our military. Recently, you guys seen that story that came out of Fort Liberty. We used to be Fort Bragg. They changed the name. We changed our names over everything, right? Everything's been changed. We got rid of our statues and things about our country. But the military, they, they have, uh, in Fort Liberty, had a training program to teach the recruits that pro-life people are terrorist groups. And S Senator Banks has written to the Secretary of the Army, they were having hearings in the subcommittee, he's got a list of questions he wants answered why they're doing this. And I, I sent Jim Banks, I did a letter too on that as well, I sent my copy of my letter to Jim Banks, he liked what I had and he told me he called me and says, Jim, I'm going to keep you posted on everything, every correspondence we get with the Army on this issue. So he's already linked me into it. I'm getting it right now. But our military, not our, not our rank and file, not our, our recruits, and not our the, just your regular non-coms and, and uh, your officers, but the high rank, the high level of our military has bought into this, this kind of nonsense, this woke and all this stuff. And now they're going to... Fort Bragg is the largest military installation we have. They got like 49 or 47 uh, uniform soldiers at all the entrances at Fort Bragg. So they've been trained. Uh, any car comes in, it's got a pro-life sticker on it, or something about pro-life or like pro-life election, that they have to check them because they're under a suspicion of being a terrorist because they're pro-life. Now they're they're trying to crawl back on this since it's got the attention, but I think Jim is still going to in, in demand that they come in for a hearing on that. So on our faith, our Christian faith, it's always under attack, right? Everything, they haven't left anything untouched. And it's just getting worse. Tomorrow, or I should say today's news will only be outdone by tomorrow's news, right? We've heard it all. Um, with the military, was it last year, they had a drag queen uh, program on one of our Navy ships. You guys knew about that? You've seen that? So it's with our Christian beliefs, our, it's, and that's the spiritual war that we're in, for sure. Uh, with the economic fights we're up against, with our education, with the things that we enjoy. I like to hear Trump said that he's going to see to it that we will still be able to buy gas engine cars, trucks. I don't want no electric car. If you have an electric car, fine, good. I will recommend to people who want to buy an electric car, be sure it has a bicycle rack on it. <laughs> Play it safe. So anyway, guys, uh, but it's, uh, and it, it goes on and on. I mean, I could spend all day, it's hot, getting hot out here, but I just want to showcase some of the stuff that's happening. You see it too. You're all, you see the news. You see what's happening. <clears throat> and of course, the liberal media, the liberal media, they, they purposely report nothing but lies. Flat out. I mean, flat out lies. They don't even hide it anymore. They're, they're bold about it. Thank you. So that's another element of this battle that we have is the media. They're against us too. So we don't have all of the access to things. We don't have the Justice Department on our side. We don't have the, so the Secret Service or the ATF. We don't have them on our side. But we do know who we have on our side. We do know, actually we know who our Commander in Chief is. Don't we? Who is our Commander in Chief? Right. So we don't lose focus on that, right?
We don't give up hope. No. Might get depressed or down a little bit sometimes, but you stay strong, keep that fire going, exactly. and get ready to face off because the closer we get in this election, and maybe even afterwards, uh, it might get a little more tense. You gotta be prepared, right? Are you ready for that? There's no turning back. We're well, gonna go back. To, we can't go back to where it once was. We got. We got to get that back. So that's my that's my comments. And uh, again, thank you for getting out here. We do have at the tables. We've got registration forms. Is anybody here not registered to, to vote? No hands went up. Okay. Well, <laughs> the early voting that started. Uh, I don't, what was the date they started on early voting? They, it's early. I don't. Is it? I, I don't know. Margie, she she would know. I don't. I don't know when. Is it? Uh, Probably November. Set, is it October the fifth? October fifth, maybe. I, maybe October fifth. And and speaking of that too, also, I'm glad you brought that up. On our statewide races too, we got Diego Morales, our Secretary of State. He's doing a bang up job. He's got an opponent. He's got a Democrat opponent against him. Diego wants to go back to ballot votes. <laughs> I like him. He And he is definitely taking steps. He's already blocked the federal government was going to try to impose on our elections here. He stopped that with what he did recently on that. And also our Attorney General, Todd Rakita. You know, Todd Rakita is one. <clears throat> he's targeted this uh, these abortion activists here in the state of Indiana. He's got a Democrat and an independent running against him. So... On our statewide races, these guys, uh, and then you got to look at your your uh, lawmakers that's running uh, in the state level. House members, all the House members are up this year, and some of the, there's a third of the state senators are up for re-election this year. So it, look at your district, who you might have. So it's not just the federal government and elections that's important. So are the state and also the local ones. Now we've had the uh, you know the primaries here. But local races, your school board races, things like that, library boards, those uh, those are appointed. But you you got to go to see who's who's doing the appointment and what kind of people they're appointing. So the local government is very important too. Actually, local government's more closer to the people. Probably in a lot of instances, it's more critical because what they do affects you almost instantly. Yep. Almost instantly. Yep. So. And Jim, yeah. Jill Hahn is here, and yeah. she's running for re-election. Yeah, Jill. We gotta get her. Jill, right Jill, is she? Where's she at? She's registered. Okay, J okay, Jill Hahn, she's running for re-election. We want to make sure she gets. You know, the city of Evansville, they kind of, they kind of lost uh, their, their, well, their, their direction here. They, you know, all the Republicans got booted out. And it's almost all Democrats now, so they gotta live with that. But we can't have any more of that stuff happening. We can't do that. So. You gotta have your friends, your neighbors, uh, family members, anybody, talk to them and cue them in. And if you find out anybody in your family or friendships that you know is watching other than some of the news that's reliable news, talk to them about changing channels so we can get some actual, true, factual um, reporting. Anyway, uh, that's, that's, like I said, these tables here, if you, if you want to take some registration forms with you, you can, right? Take some with you if you want to, and and if you find somebody that you know, a friend or family that is not registered, sign them up, okay? All right? Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I want to I wanna mention to you guys, you know, our, our, our Second Amendment patriot, Mike, Mike Chanley, he died last Monday. Actually, last Sunday is when he died. He's being buried on Monday at, uh, at the uh, Alexander Funeral Home North on Stringtown Road. 10 to 12 is uh, visiting and services at 1 o'clock. And we just got notified last night that Dave Dickinson, Dickerson, Dave Dickerson is very, very ill. And it doesn't look very good. Dave is he's in just, his last moment. he's in his last moment. So we'll keep him in our prayers that uh, God, God takes him and brings him into the fold along with our other patriot that recently died. Keep him in, in our prayers. These were warriors. My, uh, uh, David is the one that took over the Bill of Rights Day thing for us and he had the, uh, what's Citizens it, the for Citizens for Liberty and, and he was very active in all that. He was really, he did, did a good job, very active in all that. So 
Is when we Steve lose Brad these, still here? huh? I don't know. When we lose these, we got to ask: Is somebody going to step up and take their places? I don't know. Somebody should, right? We got we got to stay together, and we got to grow, grow our numbers. But anyway, that's uh, anybody got any questions? Or anything you want to say? Who's the next president? Trump. Trump. What? Trump. Say it again. Trump. Donald Trump. Trump. Donald who? Trump! <laughs> Jimmy who? Okay, if if I wants to take up some signs and go out here on the street corners and, and take a post out there for a little bit, okay? Don't get overtaken by the heat. But if you take a sign, yeah, take your sign, wave to the people. If somebody comes by and gives you a bad sign, just let them go by. Don't engage, okay? You're going to get more horn blowing than you'll get anything else. So if you will, just take a post along the sidewalk out there, folks, just for a little while. Just let them know we were out here, okay? There's signs up here for everybody to grab too if they don't have any, if they want it. We got, we got plenty of them up here to kind of show some of the inflation and stuff that might speak to some people to get them over here to get registered. So please feel free to come up and grab some of these.